In 2017, Earth was visited by something extraordinary. From the depths of interstellar space, across countless millions of years, a lone traveler entered our solar system. At first, we didn't even realize what we were seeing. By the time our telescopes caught it, the object had already swung past the sun and was racing back into the darkness. Its name is Oumuamua, a Hawaiian word meaning scout or messenger from afar. And that name could not be more fitting, for Oumuamua was the very first confirmed interstellar object ever detected passing through our neighborhood of space. At first, astronomers thought it was a comet, but something was missing. No shimmering tail, no trail of gas and dust. Then perhaps it was an asteroid. Yet its behavior defied that label as well. Oumuamua was moving far too fast. Everything within our solar system, planets, moons, asteroids, comets, remains bound to the sun's gravity. To break free requires a tremendous speed. From Earth's orbit, about 42 kilometers per second. But when we measured Oumuamua, it was moving at 87 kilometers per second, nearly double escape velocity. It wasn't bound to the sun. It wasn't orbiting. It was simply passing through on a hyperbolic trajectory that would never return. And then came the strangest detail of all. Before leaving, Oumuamua passed closer to the sun than Mercury itself. Any ordinary object would have slowed under such immense gravity, but Oumuamua didn't slow. It accelerated, as if some hidden force was pushing it outward. The laws of physics tell us that a simple rock cannot behave this way. Something else must have been at work. Which means Oumuamua was not just unusual, it was unique, unlike anything we had ever seen before. And this was only the beginning of its mystery. When we look into the depths of space, we never truly see objects themselves. All we have is light sunlight reflected off distant surfaces, faint signals carried across the void. Enormous worlds like Jupiter and Saturn reflect so much light that we can see them clearly even from hundreds of millions of kilometers away. But smaller objects like asteroids appear only as tiny blips of dim light, barely distinguishable from the background. Most asteroids are dark, rocky, and round. Their reflections are steady, unremarkable. But Oumuamua was different. It was bright, far brighter than expected, suggesting it wasn't made of ordinary rock. And stranger still, its light wasn't constant. It pulsed, bright to dim, dim to bright, repeating every seven hours. This meant the object wasn't spherical at all. Instead, it was elongated, rotating end over end as it tumbled through space. Astronomers concluded it must be shaped like a cigar, long and narrow, though another possibility was that it was flat and thin, like a cosmic saucer spinning through the dark. That second image, of course, invites wilder speculation. Was this a spacecraft? A probe from another civilization? The History Channel would certainly say so, but we're here only to present the evidence, and the evidence itself is unsettling. Because while the shape of Oumuamua was strange, it was not the strangest thing about it. What truly defied explanation was its acceleration, the subtle but undeniable push that sped it up as it left the sun. Now for comets, this is normal. Comets are giant blocks of ice and dust from the far reaches of the solar system. As they approach the sun, their frozen surfaces sublimate transforming directly from solid ice to gas. That gas jets outward, acting like tiny thrusters, nudging the comet, altering its velocity. That's what gives comets their glowing halos and long streaming tails. But Oumuamua had none of these signs. No coma, no tail, no visible outgassing at all. And yet, it behaved just like a comet being pushed along by invisible jets. So the question naturally followed, if it wasn't outgassing, what was pushing it? Was it natural or engineered? Tracing its path, astronomers saw that Oumuamua appeared to come from the direction of Vega, 
the bright beacon of the constellation Lyra. Vega has long fascinated humanity. 14,000 years ago, it was Earth's North Star, the fixed point around which the heavens seem to turn. And in another 12,000 years, it will take that role again as Earth slowly wobbles on its axis. Now, there's no evidence that Oumuamua originated in the Vega system. Its trajectory only happened to line up with that part of the sky. But coincidences began to pile up. And mysterious object, behaving in ways we couldn't explain, from the direction of one of the most significant stars in human history, and it passed right through our cosmic backyard. Close, in cosmic terms, still meant 24 million kilometers, 50 times farther than the moon, but close enough that if it were an ancient alien probe, it certainly would have had a good look at us. And yet, by the time we saw it, it was already gone. We spotted Oumuamua only after it had passed Earth and was on its way back into interstellar space. Ideas have been floated about sending a probe to chase it down, but at its speed and with its head start, no rocket humanity has today could catch it. To do so would require an impossible feats of orbital mechanics, a slingshot around Jupiter, a plunge toward the sun, and a final engine burn to fling a spacecraft fast enough to give chase. By then, Oumuamua would be far beyond reach. So all we are left with is the faint light it reflected back at us and the mysteries it left behind. If Oumuamua had been the only interstellar visitor we would ever see, perhaps it would have remained nothing more than a cosmic riddle. But the story does not end there. Not long after our first encounter with a messenger from the stars, something remarkable happened. We were visited again. In 2019, astronomers spotted a second interstellar traveler. This one was named Borisov, after the amateur stargazer who first caught sight of it. Like Oumuamua, Borisov followed a hyperbolic path, too fast for the sun to capture, destined to slip through our solar system and return to the interstellar deep. Its trajectory traced back toward the constellation Cassiopeia, a familiar crown of stars in the northern sky. But unlike Oumuamua, Borisov carried no mystery about what it was. It looked like a comet. It behaved like a comet. Its makeup was strikingly similar to the icy wanderers of our own solar system. Spectacular, yes, but not unexplainable. What was remarkable, though, was the timing. For all of human history, as long as we've been studying the heavens, not a single interstellar object had ever been detected. Then, within just two years, we saw two. And now, we found a third. This new arrival has been named 3I of Aaliyah Atlas, the third interstellar object ever discovered after the survey system that first detected it, the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, or ATLAS. On July 1st, astronomers spotted it more than 4.5 astronomical units from the Sun, that's four and a half times the Earth's distance, placing it just beyond Jupiter's orbit. Unlike Oumuamua, which we noticed only as it was leaving, Atlas was caught on its inbound journey. For the first time, we get to watch one of these interstellar visitors as it approaches our star. And this one is different. It's bigger, it's faster, and it's not arriving head on like its predecessors. Umuamua and Borisov came at us almost directly, as though our paths had collided by chance. But Atlas is sweeping in from the side, like a cosmic T-bone collision. That trajectory means it hails from a completely different region of the galaxy, far removed from the stellar neighborhoods we know. To understand what that means, picture the Milky Way. From above, it's a great spiral disk of stars. Our sun sits halfway between the galactic core and the rim, but seen edge-on, the picture changes. At the center lies a dense, luminous bulge of stars. Surrounding it is a flat, rotating disk, the galactic thin disk, where most stars, including our sun, reside. Above and below that plane lies the thick disk, 
a sparser, older population of stars. These are ancient relics, remnants from the early days of the galaxy, and beyond them, scattered across the halo, are clusters of stars, globular clusters, strange and isolated, like stellar fossils of a bygone age. And it is from somewhere in this vast, ancient architecture that Atlas has come to us. Here's why 3 Eye of Alia Atlas matters. Its path suggests it may have originated not from the bustling thin disk of our galaxy, but from the ancient thick disk above and below it. If that's true, then Atlas is not just an interstellar traveler, it's a relict, an object possibly more than 7 billion years old, predating even the birth of our solar system. That alone makes it extraordinary. But there are two more reasons this visitor has captured the attention of astronomers. The first is its sheer size. Early observations suggested a diameter of nearly 20 kilometers, and as we studied it further, a clearer picture emerged. Atlas carries with it a glowing coma, a halo of gas and dust. This means it's not a bare rock like Oumuamua, but a comet, much like Borisov. The coma itself measures some 20 kilometers wide, while the nucleus, the solid, icy heart, could be as large as 11 kilometers across. By comparison, that makes Atlas 10 times the size of Oumuamua and five times the size of Borisov. Our interstellar visitors, it seems, are getting bigger. The second reason lies in its trajectory. Unlike Oumuamua and Borisov, which slipped almost unnoticed through the solar system, Atlas is set to perform a grand tour of planets. It will pass within 28 million kilometers of Mars, then swing past Venus at 97 million kilometers, and finally brush by Jupiter at just 53 million kilometers. Close enough on cosmic scales to greet three worlds in a single journey. But not Earth. As Atlas sweeps through the inner solar system, our planet will be hidden on the opposite side of the Sun. To some, that coincidence is unsettling. Is it possible that Atlas is more than a comet? Could it be a probe, one deliberately avoiding the only inhabited planet while quietly surveying the rest of our neighborhood? Some speculate, but even with an open mind, that stretches credulity. If an alien civilization truly sent such a craft across the galaxy over billions of years, would it really pass up the chance to examine the only world teeming with life? More likely, Atlas is exactly what it appears to be, a comet, a messenger from the thick disk, ancient beyond comprehension, carrying with it the chemical fingerprints of a bygone era of the galaxy. And for now, we have the rare privilege of watching it, in the months ahead, our telescopes will track its journey as it grows brighter and swings closer. And this time, unlike with Oumuamua, we may not be entirely powerless to investigate. We cannot build and launch a new mission quickly enough from Earth, but there are spacecraft already in orbit around Mars and Jupiter. In theory, a daring maneuver could send one of these robotic explorers to intercept Atlas in deep space. Even the Juno spacecraft, now circling Jupiter, could, at least in principle, be redirected to meet this ancient traveler. The chances of that happening are slim, but even the possibility reveals just how far we've come. For the first time in history, humanity has the tools, the reach, and perhaps the will to chase down an interstellar visitor. Because if we had done so with Oumuamua, we might already hold answers to mysteries that still haunt us today. Instead, we are left with questions, but with Atlas, we have a chance to do better. Let's assume for a moment that Oumuamua was not an alien spacecraft. Could it still be explained as a natural object? Quite possibly. Comets, after all, are nothing more than frozen remnants from the outskirts of solar systems, icy archives of ancient worlds, in our own cosmic neighborhood, most comets are made largely of frozen water. As they draw near the sun, that ice sublimates directly into vapor, 
creating the spectacular tales we know so well. But water isn't the only substance that can make up a comet. Take nitrogen, for example. Invisible, odorless, and undetectable to our eyes, it makes up nearly 80% of the air we breathe, and yet it's crucial for life on Earth. Out in the solar system, there is one familiar world almost entirely made of it, Pluto. Pluto's surface is cloaked in nitrogen ice, gleaming brightly in the far reaches of the Kuiper Belt. That reflectivity is one reason it was once hailed as a planet. But despite its shine, Pluto is small, less than 2,500 kilometers across, far tinier than our own moon. Now imagine a catastrophic event, Pluto, or a Pluto-like world, struck by a massive asteroid or wandering planet. The impact shatters its surface, flinging shards of nitrogen ice into space. One fragment is hurled sunward, racing into the inner solar system. As it nears the sun, the nitrogen begins to sublimate, solid turning directly into gas. But unlike water vapor, nitrogen leaves no visible signature, no glowing coma, no sweeping tail to our telescopes. It appears inert, silent. Yet the invisible jets of escaping gas act like natural thrusters, nudging the shard onto a new trajectory, one that eventually slings it out of the solar system and into interstellar space. That shard, born from the wreckage of a distant frozen world, could be what we glimpsed as Oumuamua, a messenger of cosmic violence sculpted by processes so vast and indifferent that we can scarcely imagine them. Or it could have been what some suggest, an alien probe, a 100-meter-long C-shaped spacecraft tumbling through space passing tantalizingly close to Earth, but never engaging, never revealing its purpose, and then vanishing back into the void. Between those two possibilities lies the spectrum of our ignorance, and that is why the arrival of Three-Eye of Alia Atlas is so vital. Unlike Oumuamua, we have time to watch, to measure, to understand. Atlas offers us a rare opportunity to peel back the layers of mystery to separate science from speculation, and to learn what interstellar visitors truly are. Because every new object that crosses into our solar system carries with it more than ice and dust. It carries a story, one that began billions of years ago, in places we may never see, shaped by forces we are only beginning to understand. And in studying them, we might discover that the universe is not just stranger than we imagine, it is stranger than we can imagine.